Life can be strange sometimes. Well, at least for me anyway. I've always said that I find it really odd how oftentimes we experience media at just the right time we needed to see them. Finding that right song that related directly to that feeling that you were going through. Or watching that one film or anime that really delivered the message you honestly needed at that time in your life. Or in my case, playing a video game that literally changed my life. Okay, well, maybe that's a bit dramatic, but a game that helped me in a time of need that really motivated me to pursue my dreams that I was struggling with at that given time just doesn't really roll off the tongue as well, does it? Let me set the scene for you. A few years ago, I had just finished high school and was getting ready for college. Up until that point, I had been homeschooled my entire life which despite popular stereotypes does not actually make you a socially awkward weirdo. I just happen to be a weirdo anyway. This was both an exciting and a scary time in my life, as I was asking questions like, am I good enough for college, what do I want to do with my life, and are my passions really worth pursuing, or should I do something that will make me more money? All these and thousands of other questions buzzed through my mind like a shrill buzz saw. But then, illuminated in an oddly neon yellow tinted light, came Persona 4 Golden. On a whim, I purchased the game, needing a good JRPG to escape into for a while. And to make a long 100 hour journey short, I ended up falling absolutely in love with Persona 4. I loved the complex characters and all the funny situations that they would get into with each other. I loved seeing the progression of the game and the twists and turns as the murder mystery unfolded. And I loved the idea of the Persona. The idea of the truth and the inner self. These are concepts that had always interested me, and this game knows how to tackle them with a sense of grandiose nature, as well as a sense of humor. Characters that I thought I would never end up liking, I ended up loving. And the game also got me interested in Jungian psychology, more on that in a bit. I almost wished that the game would never end, but of course when it did, an odd feeling rushed over me. I was of course sad that the game was over, but I suddenly realized that I wasn't feeling as afraid of college anymore. In fact, I felt like my innermost feelings were as clear as the morning sky. I always knew I wanted to be a writer, a creative writer at that, and I always wanted to start a YouTube channel. I had known that for years, and honestly, it was something that I think I was in denial of, always telling myself that I would become a game designer, or a psychiatrist, or, you know, into business, computers, medical science, and then one day I would pursue my true dreams of being an author. And as for the YouTube channel thing, it was always something that I hoped on doing, but I always told myself maybe I wasn't really good enough to do it, or Maybe it was just something of a pipe dream to ever think of creating a YouTube channel. I know that seems silly in retrospect, but, well, it's what was going through my mind at the time. But something about this game, this game about an anime Scooby-Doo gang solving a murder mystery and spilling their guts all over the walls... Feast your eyes! gross, really spoke to me. And I know that I'm not the only one who Persona 4 or hell this whole series has spoken to. Give it up for my pal and the Persona lore master himself, Snickety Slice. Dylan, you son of a bitch.
Rambling about Persona is basically all I do these days, so I'm happy to tag along for this video. Wonderful. This should be fun. And on that note, I suppose I ought to analyze exactly what that something is in this game that spoke to me so much. Media, and by extension, stories, have the ability to move us, inspire us. What makes stories from video games so powerful is that why film and music often convey their messages to the audience, video games are unique in that they can allow you to discover them on your own. Let me give you an example. Harry Potter, a series about a boy going to a magical school to learn magic and spells and teen drama, all while he fights an evil snake man, is both a film and a book series that I'd say is, a uh, slightly popular? Sometimes to the point of people never reading anything else. But diving deeper, what are the themes of the series? Well, to even the most casual of observers, themes of friendship, good versus evil, and religious undertones seem to persist rather nicely throughout the whole series. So let's latch on to what I like to call a macro theme, an all-encompassing theme that seems omnipresent in all the other smaller ones, which for Harry Potter's case I would argue is determining one's own fate, and accepting the inevitability of death. Now before we get too far into that, let's look at some of the themes of Persona 4. While it may be a humongous disservice to not elaborate on the vast number of themes that Persona 4 covers, let's try to make this easy on ourselves and look at the primary ones. Friendship is certainly a powerful theme throughout, along with the question of truth. What is the truth, and should we pursue it, knowing it may hurt us? Or should we stay comfortable in our own pit of fog? And finally, Persona is well known for taking ideas from Jungian psychology, and it could even be argued that it is the source from which all of their themes in the series originates from. Perhaps you would like to elaborate more on that, Snickety? The epistemological themes are very much inspired by Jung's writings. Jung is, as Dylan correctly pointed out, the source of most of the themes present in the series, including the title concept, The Persona, which the game describes as the facade used to overcome life's hardships. Jungian psychology is ultimately about finding the truth of oneself, how we think, feel, and operate. Persona 4 represents this search in many ways. The characters are coming to terms with the darker parts of themselves, aka their shadows, but they're also chasing after an elusive figure just beyond the fog. They are, as the battle theme is keen to remind us, reaching out to the truth. The fog that appears in the town symbolizes humanity's collective desire to live in blissful ignorance, not only from the world around them, but also the deeper, undiscovered parts of themselves that may not be easy to accept. Excellently put, Snickety. Now if only I could get to the point that fast. Point being that Persona 4 is a game chuck full of themes. But then, let's jump back to Harry Potter. How are the themes of Harry Potter portrayed to the audience? Well, through a few different things. Characterization, symbolism, overarching plot, and the core philosophies and fight between good and evil. After all, knowing which philosophy is considered good and which is bad in a story often reveals the stance the story wishes to take. These are all things that also ring true in Persona 4, but there is a key difference. These themes are not spelt out to you the same way a film might need to, but it is instead weaved into the gameplay. The best example of this would probably be the all-important 
social links, also known as pick your waifu for laifu, boys. Social links have two purposes. One is to level up each persona archetype each character represents. Death, devil, lovers, chariot, all that stuff. Which in turn helps you to create and own more powerful personas. Which makes it easier for you to... The other reason is a bit more abstract, however, as it's to get to know each of these characters more, understanding their quirks, personalities, issues, and sort of see it all unfold in a mini-story outside of the primary one. This works on so many levels because by getting to know each character, you are simultaneously getting closer to them leveling them up, as well as the Persona user, and getting more powerful for it. Which sort of pushes an interesting message, that only through social connections and our bonds with others can we, in turn, become stronger. This theme is admittingly pushed throughout the game quite a lot, but is ultimately something that the player naturally comes to not only just understand, but agree with, as it does undeniably make you stronger. Uh, at least in the game, anyway. You, the gray-haired protagonist, is a self-insert into the town of Inuba. He's a blank slate for the sake of you projecting yourself upon him as he interacts with each character. You represents... well, you. And thus, as you build friendships, pick a waifu, help the various characters, and save others from the crazy TV land, you learn to love these characters, and all that they do for you, as well as all that you do for them. This happens naturally through the progression of the game, so as you help these characters through their struggles, character flaws, and help them move past it, you unknowingly give advice to... yourself. Let me elaborate a bit. A character who gets a lot of flack for being boring is Yukiko. And while yes, I do personally prefer Chie myself, I will fully admit that in many ways I found myself relating with Yukiko the most when I first played the game. Her struggles of not knowing if she should stay and run her family business, her life and finances secure, but she herself stuck in this boring little town, never to see the rest of the world, or she should run away, all for the purpose of some other dream, her life unknowing and mysterious. Either way, she felt like a bird trapped in a cage, as she felt like she was throwing something away for the sake of the other. And man oh man, could I relate to that before heading into college. If I go to college, what career should I pursue? Will I be happy with the choice that I make? If I try to find my way in college, will it have been years thrown away? Should I even go to college? What the hell do I want to do with my life? I can certainly say that no matter which way I went, I indeed also felt trapped. And hell, when you can't make up your own damn mind, you're also then trapped by your lack of a choice. That's when it clicked, however. When I actually helped Yukiko through her issues, in an odd way I sort of helped myself as well. I gave the answers I thought this Animu girl needed to hear, and wouldn't you know it, I sort of helped myself along the way as well. There are honestly a lot of characters that I could find relatable in some way or another in Persona though. Hey Snickety. Any Persona characters you found yourself relating to in some way or fashion? I'd have to go with Yosuke, mainly because he reminds me most of myself in high school. He's the awkward funny man who is, more often than not, the butt of the joke. Plus, he's terrible with women. At times, I found myself identifying more with him than the designated player insert Yu Narakami. His reactions in this extremely bizarre situation would probably be my own. That's interesting, but you know, now that you mention it, 
You are both funny, chill fellows, I suppose. I wonder how I would react to a pun-loving, talking teddy bear. Plus, he does work at... Every day's great and you're too next. This all culminates into what can only be considered the best possible villain for a game about finding one's true self and the bonds of others making you stronger. Toru Adachi is an interesting villain, to say the least. From the start, we don't find out that he's the villain, I.O., the infamous killer in the game, to near its very conclusion. Until then, Adachi was a sort of comic relief, being Detective Dojima's dim-witted sidekick. He seemed like the type of guy who sometimes was trying his best, and other times was just a real fucking slack-off and a dork. And not exactly the brightest bulb in the box either. But that was all facade, a mask that he hid under while his true intentions lay buried within his own mind. Rather fitting considering the major themes of Persona 4 that its main villain would too be someone who hides under the mask, cloaking from his true self. Wow. I'm surprised you made it this far. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Just because someone joins the police doesn't make them some kind of agent of justice. You know why I applied? So I could legally carry a gun. That's all. You'd be surprised how many are like that. I thought it would be fun too. But to tell the truth, that was a wash. Everyone around me was such an idiot. Let's be honest. There's nothing great about the real world, is there? It's just dull and annoying as hell. No one accepts that's the way things are. They're just stuck with it because they can't deny it either. Adachi is in every single way the opposite of our protagonist. Adachi is a nihilist who hates the world and hates everyone in it. He sees no apparent value in others and no true value in truth, as he thinks that everyone would be far happier simply living inside their own cloud of fog. We also see that his connection with you in that he also has Izanagi as a persona, and like you was given the gift by Izanami at the beginning of the game. Thus, it is in this way that Adachi represents you, the player, what you could have been if you had chosen to use your powers against others, if instead of facing your problems, you fall victim to them. Instead of reaching out for the truth, you accepted the lie because that's what made you feel comfortable. What I find interesting in his philosophy is that he also argues that everyone is like him. I find this fascinating because he can't connect with other people, again, the opposite of our protagonist. And in this new world of everyone being shadows, things that are only the shape of something more real, and the loss of individuality, in this sort of world, people like him would indeed rule it, and would finally be happy. The sweet idea that ignorance is truly bliss. His argument is that people don't really want the truth. That people can't face the truth. So that they would rather live in their own truths. I find it even more interesting, however, that so many people find Adachi so damn relatable nowadays and in some ways could even say something about the nature of mankind at the current moment, or the rise of self-appointed victimhood in our culture. But perhaps that topic is for another day. In the end though, our cast of characters reject his mindset and stop both him and Izanami's plans for mankind's end. Because they aren't victims. They understand who they truly are, flaws and all, as well as the flaws in mankind, and that they are also the deciders of their own fate. Hmm, didn't I say that was a macro theme in Harry Potter? See, that wasn't all for nothing, I didn't go on a random tangent about Harry Potter for nothing. You thought it was for nothing, didn't you? Persona 4 is an amazing game, and if I'm being honest, 
I only really scratched the surface of how amazing it truly is. But I suppose I'll keep the super detailed and comprehensive Persona videos to my pal Snickety. God knows he's much more versed in it than me. In the end, I wanted to share my thoughts and feelings on the game and how these themes helped me in pursuing my dreams, as well as being a major source of inspiration in my writing, as it turns out. Anything that you would like to add, Snickety? I like Persona 4 because it makes me feel like I have a life for a hundred or so hours. Uh, but mostly, it's the complicated themes. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> well, I suppose you do have a bit of a point. We'll probably have a little too. <clears throat> but anyway, thank you so much for joining me today, Snickety. It's been a real honor working alongside you. It's been a lot of fun. I hope we can do it again sometime. Let me know in the comments below if Persona 4 or Hell, if any of the Persona games helped you through a rough patch or inspired you in some way or fashion. And until next time, this is Dylan the Night Owl, flying off. Black Cross. Black Cross.